trip in Norway with my family and we are about to drive up a thousand meters in elevation. We start out in this valley called Sætisdalen and at the small town of Rista, which lies 250 meters above sea level. There is a road going up the mountain. Pretty quickly we are getting higher in elevation. I just love this. The highest I've been was in the Rocky Mountains at about 3,700 meters. And it was so cool. I studied ecology and I want to include some ecology facts in this video. The air temperature decreases with 0.64 degrees Celsius per 100 meter higher in elevation. So if we're driving from 250 meters to 1000 meters in elevation, we would expect the air temperature to decrease with 4.8 degrees. Now that's a difference. So we're starting in the valley at 250 meters in elevation. Look at the plants. We have a grass field, we have tall trees. Now we've begun to drive up the mountain. I don't exactly know how far up we are, but I know it's under 700 meters. Look at the trees now. They are shorter, right? The concentration of oxygen in the air is lower here, and tall trees can grow here. Here you see the trees are starting to look like bushes. They are getting shorter and shorter. Now we're at 700 meters, and notice the plants are getting shorter. I will explain later why being short is an advantage in high altitudes. But I can explain that 700 meters above sea level here in this latitude doesn't look the same in other latitudes. When I traveled through the Rockies in the USA, there were far more tall trees, so it isn't only less oxygen that impacts the tree line or the limit as to what height trees cannot grow anymore. Look, there is some snow here. 800 meters. Notice there aren't any trees in sight anymore. And I gotta say, there aren't many bushes left either. It's beautiful, right? 900 meters. We have some real snow here. This is Norway in June, guys. The plants are getting shorter and flatter. I can't really see good bushes anymore. They're flat. Thousand meters. At thousand meters in elevation, many plants are short and flat. The shape makes it easier for the plant to get warm and to keep warm. It doesn't lose heat the same way a tall tree would have. Another useful shape to have up in the mountains is the shape of this grass. There is less wind in the center of this plant than outside of it, so it has an isolation effect. Also, the increase in temperature isn't as fast as these flat plants. We don't always want a fast increase in temperature. Plants can get sunburned too, you know. The temperature in the soil is important too. Many plants here in the mountains keep more than half of their bodies in the soil, their roots, to protect them from the cold. You might think, aren't the roots freezing in the soil? Well, no, the roots are safe here. The soil is warmer deep in the earth than closer to the surface, because the heat loss is the highest close to the surface. These short and flat plants and these grasses are less dependent on climate, not only in temperature, but also wind, than say, bushes and trees. Bushes and trees are much more dependent on temperature because of their height and shape. Another trick that plants living in cold areas have is they decrease their freezing point by adding more sugar in their cells. That's pretty cool. So to sum up, down in the valleys we have tall trees. At 700 meters the trees are definitely shorter and bushes are normal. At 800 meters I couldn't see any more trees and bushes become more rare. At 900 meters we have snow. At 1000 meters we can see that the plants are shorter, flatter and use tricks to overcome the cold. I know my travel is about travel and geography. This is kind of travel and kind of geography. It's more biology this time, but that's fun too.